you know, how frustrating was it to have to sit out and try to build some momentum, obviously, going into this season, having to sit out for the hamstring? Uh, it took, I just took it as another, you know, another lesson, another um, learning, learning episode, I would say, just, uh, you know, just so I was hurting. Can you describe your uh, pass coverage skills, being able to get an interception? Oh, man. One in Vegas. Uh, man, so um, originally I used to play linebacker. I'm pretty sure you guys knew that, but shit. Uh, other than that, that's, that's literally all my... Dropping skills comes from that playing linebacker. I see. You have a lot of interceptions as a linebacker. I did not. <laughs> I, they just coming in right about now. I have seen a video though of you covering up. I think he's at Arizona now, a receiver at Arizona, mm -hmm. just I think for fun and practice. And mm -hmm. you you really wowed everybody. So it, it sounds like there there must have been times on the playground or after practice where you got the run a little bit. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. I like to have a little fun after practice, you know, uh, just getting out of your, you know, comfort zone, being able to just, you know, back up and cover, play DB just for fun, you know. It's just getting out of your comfort zone is probably what it is. Do you spend much time last summer with, with Nick during this time of year, just kind of going through the mechanics and, and the mindset of a pass rusher? And, and if you did or even if you didn't, how much – uh, of an impact do you feel by not having him around just to kind of bounce stuff up off of this summer? Uh, at this time, I did. I was working with him um, after practice every now and then when we can. Uh, we would get some extra work in. But, um, man, it's, it's just like having an answer to the test. I'm pretty sure I told you guys this before, but it's just like having an answer to the test. You know, uh, being with Bosa, you know, him being one of the dominant players he is, you know, it's, it's, it's great to have him, you know, Right, right by your side, just to ask him questions whenever you need help. What's it like talking to him about pass rush mentality and just the mechanics of it as well? It's pretty cool. He's a pretty cool dude about it. I mean, pretty mellow. Uh, just how you guys hear him is probably how he talks to us too as well. So, man, it's it's uh it's pretty cool as well just to know that you know a guy like him that's really out there getting sacks and um, knowing what he's talking about is is actually true and it's going to work and you know he's lived that so you know to put that in your game you know you could you could do something with that as well have you, have you stayed back or with him this year or are you still communicating with him one more time are you still in touch with them do you do you reach out to them or are you just kind of giving them space uh, every now and again whenever something arises that I, you know i should hit him up or you know i see a funny video send it to him something like that you know it's regular stuff still in like the defensive lineman's group chat and stuff. So Every now and again. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he's totally been gone. Nah, not at all. I was just going to say, you go up against Trent and Colton in the one-on-ones. Just take us into your mindset, you know, before that ball snapped. Give us something. What's it like going up? How would you compare going up against those guys? Iron you sharpens iron. moves that you try. Iron sharpens iron. Uh, I just know, you know, when I'm lining up that when I get ready to do this rep, we're going to make each other better. And that's really what it is between, you know, all the old linemen and all the D linemen. When we go against each other, everybody's just trying to get better. Well, you've been out there, I think I've seen you mostly on the left side. Is that where you're most comfortable? Is that where the coaches are just putting you in there? We usually flip flop. It doesn't, you know, it's not really left and right side. We just go wherever side we want. Have you been working on different pass rush moves this uh, this summer? I mean, um, if the question is, what is your repertoire like this year versus rookie year? I would say I was adding, I've added a couple more pass rush moves in there, um, really just working on my body, you know, uh, and all that other stuff will come, you know, with my D-line coach and stuff like that. So really, I've just been working on my body, but I did add a little bit, a little bit of sauce. Has improved with uh, the added strength uh, weight that you have. I believe so, but you guys have to watch for yourself. Drake, what's the most number of snaps you've ever played in a game, and have you geared up to play a lot more snaps this year than you did a year ago? Oh, uh, I kind of really don't look at snaps. You know, I, whenever the coach tells us to go in, we just go in and um, always stay ready, and we'll see. Anything else, Drake? Yeah. Yes, sir. Year to uh, just where you felt the line or feel the line is now compared to where it was a year ago. Uh, I think that I mean it's pretty comp it's pretty comparable. I feel like we're in a, a great spot for a regular season.
Um, obviously, we have one more preseason game to get through, um, and that'll be a good test just to see, kind of like a dress, like a dress rehearsal for us. Make sure that we, uh, you know, ev everything is as efficient as it can be on game day, and we know exactly what we're doing going into week one. For that reason, is this week a little bit more like the regular season and how you're you're preparing for for this preseason game? Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, in years past, we used to have four, so the third game kind of used to be like that that game that's kind of like a like a real season game. But now that we just have three, uh, some some teams do it like we've been doing it where. You kind of trickle in the starters in the second and third game, but it looks like we're going to be getting a decent amount of steps on Friday. So, were there enough uh, enough chances to you know get a good feel for stuff in the dozen snaps you played Saturday night? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, football's football, which is always great, but you can't emulate those full speed game snaps. Like, uh, you know, you can't you you really can't see that speed in practice. Just because you don't want to, you know, have people on the ground and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was very beneficial to us as a group and us as a team. Jake, do you think going against Hargrave every single day this summer has made you a better player? No doubt. Yeah. So his his initial get off fits our scheme perfectly. Like he's 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 one of the quickest guys I've gone against in the A gaps. Um, so anytime I get that just in general to go against that. And, and I mean, if he's one of the best, if not the best at doing what he does, I mean, everyone else I go against should be not a walk in the park, but should be uh, seen before, right? Like the stuff that they bring on Sundays should be seen before in practice. So, I mean, it's just, it's just great. It's, it's, it's really great work that we get to work against each other. One-on-ones, we always get a rep against each other. So it is, I mean, it's great. I feel like hopefully he gets the same from me, so. <laughs> Forster was telling us last week that he thought the most tired he ever sees an offensive line is the first, like if, have, if there's an extended drive on the first drive of the regular season, 10 to 12 snaps, because there's nothing that replicates it, even preseason games in terms of the strain and everything. Is that, did you notice that? Yeah, I would I'll, I'll de I'll definitely agree with that, um, especially the drives that we kind of get into, a lot of like double digit drives. Um, yeah, that like that first one of if, if it's the first game or second game of the season, you always kind of hit that limit, and then you always have to push through that limit a little bit. So, yeah. In practice, been El Manning. Uh, El, Ma El yeah. Manning, the Just, undrafted rookie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he doesn't look like an NFL tackle. Maybe he won't remain an NFL tackle. He might go inside. But I don't know. You seem to have opened some eyes as far as maybe he's better than. than yeah, I mean, the guy's got amazing physical attributes to him. Um, obviously, he's not the prototypical height of a tackle, but, uh, you know, I feel like he's definitely shown us and he's shown the league in these past two games that he can really be a contender. You know, obviously, he's got to get the grasp of the offense down, as all rookies do. But at the same time, I feel like, yeah, I mean, he's he's a solid, solid rookie. You, you find yourself trying to identify you know, which guys could possibly be centers uh, later on in their career. I mean, some, some of these guys will get moved to that position. And do you, are you good at kind of figuring out who has what it takes to be, be a center? I mean, I kind of leave that up to the coaches and the front offices and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's certain attributes that centers have that other players don't. Um, there's some, some players might take the path of outside in there's other players that take the path of inside out, so it really isn't like a like a cookie cutter. This guy's a center sort of thing, but I feel like, yeah, I mean, I could definitely give you a couple attributes that you know I have and other centers across the league have, but that doesn't mean they can't play guard either. So. Since you have an established line and everybody's played together, what is 15 to 20 snaps against the Chargers? going to do that helps you week one against Pittsburgh? So it's a, sim I mean, it's a similar defense. Obviously, they don't have the same players, but it's a similar scheme. Um, unfortunately, we go against a, you know, like a 4-3 defense against our own defense. So seeing 3-4 is always great. I don't know how much base they're going to play against us. They might play you know, a lot of four down like they've played the, like the past couple, couple weeks. But um, 
anytime we can see a different defense, a different you know structure of the secondary, different linebackers on the second level, I mean that's 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 all work, that's all reps that we should be banking going into the regular season. Spencer Burford played a lot of snaps last year, but at times was in an unusual position for an offensive lineman of being platooned a little bit. Uh, what does it say to you about him that he has come back this year in position to be a full-time starter? Yeah, I mean, we're asking a lot of him this season compared to last season where it was kind of a 50-50 with Brunskill. Um, you know, I feel like this, this offseason for him has been critical, and he really has approached it well. He knows the offense a, a, a lot better than he did last season, which you would hope a rookie would be able to go in there that first offseason and really study his, study his plays. Um, and yeah, he's, he's, he's come back stronger, faster, meaner. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see what he does week one. I'm just like mentality wise, I feel like he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, which is great. It's great to see that. What do you think of Colton McKivitz and why do you think he's ready for this moment to be a starter? I mean, he's, he's, he's been backing up some great players for his entire career. And, you know, he kind of has my same storyline, you know. Obviously, he was drafted, but uh, him, him being on practice squad, like getting cut and being on practice squad for a little bit really kind of. In my in my opinion, re really ignited a fire within him, and uh, just seeing how he's responded from that, and being able to come back and you know achieve the prove it deal that he has now, and just kind of just see what he 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 can make out of it, kind of like how I did last season. So honestly, I'm I'm, I'm expecting big things. Still about three weeks away from your first real game, but I mean, still, would it be nice to have Nick Bosa here and moment where at least a slight exhale when he finally shows up? I mean, of course, um, but you know, I don't. I can't really speak to that. I'm not. I'm not the money guy. So, <laughs> but no, he 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 honestly gives us great work going 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 against Nick. Um, he barely he barely ever uses the same move twice in practice. So, being able for our tackles to go against a player like that, where you really have you have a rolodex of moves, he's got probably 20, maybe even more that he can use at any given time. You know, it is it is very beneficial to our tackles to go against a guy like that in camp and in practice. All right, Jake, appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, faithful, don't forget to click here to subscribe to our YouTube.